Wednesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It is the DJ Roundtable. As always, we are here to have some fun and talk about stuff. And as always, great in the green room beforehand, we're all talking about equipment and gear and uh, about software and about all the fun things beforehand. Uh, things that work well, things that unfortunately sometimes don't work well or problems we're having. And uh, unfortunately, you know, it's a way of life with a mobile DJ. And if you're a mobile DJ, you're watching us. Thank you, first thing first. This is my humble house, which you can see in the corner a box over there and some stuff. This is a, a, this is an office. This is a spare room in my house. I have a little storage. I have a treadmill behind me, and I have you here as well. Speaking of who's all in their houses, everyone else here except for Tommy. Tommy's in school. So everyone else tuning uh, in from the home. dorm room right now. <laughs> yep, yep, he's in his room partying hard, working on his homework at the same time he's here. And as well, we thank you for coming into our homes. We welcome you uh, wholeheartedly into our little world here. And if you are watching this on YouTube, do me a favor. Make sure you go down there. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up. That helps the algorithm because we want the algorithm to say, hey, this is a popular show. The other thing, hit subscribe and make sure you check the bell icon. Make sure that you're getting, you know, when it comes live. Um and I have to call out uh, DJ Solsis. He was supposed to send me a link for that uh, portable. Oh, I was. Yep. And you didn't. So I had to uh, oh, delay me, broadcasting and putting out this let me, new show. Let me, let me start with a story for you all of, of <laughs> okay. Wyatt. So, let's hear it. So I had 140 Google reviews, right? And then I checked a day later and it was went down to 137. Now, Google will automatically block certain reviews if they sound too good to be true, or if there's profanity, or if there's text in a photo, like somebody puts a photo strip in there. So I was thinking, okay, well, they also do it if somebody uses, let's say, Jim and Stacy wedding 2022 at gmail.com. They're not going to use that email address after the wedding. Maybe they will for a week or two. Then they're done with that. If your account is inactive in Google for a certain period of time, they remove it, and thus all reviews get removed with it. So I dropped down to 137. I Googled, how do I get my Google reviews back? Not thinking I ever would. So I found a link where you could contact Google, send them a message saying, hey, my reviews have been missing. It happens every once in a while. Day later, they reinstate it. Great. Day after that, I get an email saying, your Google profile has been disabled. Disabled or suspended or something. Basically, they wiped me off Google. All my reviews gone. Page completely gone. You know, devastating. Business killing, right? So um, they, they don't give you a reason why either. But what I think it was is because I had them do the review thing, they saw that my business is registered to a PO box. And that's a huge no. Like that's a big no-no on Google because they prioritize physical addresses. So I was grandfathered in before they had that rule, which is why my business is showing up as a PO, a PO box at a Staples. So contacted this company that specializes in getting Google listings back, uh, paid them their fee. Uh, you don't pay them until after they get it done so they got to work on it within 48 hours the listing was back reviews were back photos were back 143 by the way so they they still did keep all the all the reviews that were removed and uh everything's back to normal now but it was it was pretty terrifying that was on thursday or wednesday night at like 11 i got that email and uh i'm you know what i also had to do the other problem is my business listing is dj solstice but my llc is solstice entertainment so not only did I have to get a physic a statement of information from the California Secretary of State stating like a physical address for my business, I also had to go to my county office and get a DBA, file it in the paper so that it shows that I have a DBA under DJ Solstice. And after all that, you submit all that to Google and uh, we're back live. So that's the stress I was dealing with. Uh, and that was all before like the wedding show on Saturday and um, and such. So that's why I didn't get the link to you. <laughs> well, hopefully you'll get the link this week for uh for it so that way I can get the show out on uh on time. But I wait and wait and wait. I'm like, okay, we can get a link. Sorry. I'm sorry. So, you me. Just just shoot me a DM. Just bug me and I'll do it. Uh, I, again, I, I know you're I know you're busy and I, I don't want always want to bug everyone, but I do like to bug Jeff. <laughs> He's a great guy to bug. And uh I have a I'm gonna have to pick your brain a little bit because I got asked to do a uh school dance which i don't normally do and i i've done them in the past 
Um, and that's because the fact that we volunteered and to a local school, um, I'm actually helping out another DJ out. Uh, they can't do it. They, uh, asked me and I said, yeah, no problem. Uh, real great, uh, DJ. And, uh, I haven't done a school dance in a while. So afterwards I got to pick your brain just a little bit of a couple quick questions. So, and this is one of the things I want you guys out there to think about a lot of DJs. And I've seen this at, you know, like, um, we have a wedding Wednesday group that I go, I go to every so often, uh, when we have time to trace and I go to it. Um, and see other DJs there. And so a lot of DJs are very much, hey, how you doing? Oh, you're another DJ, cool. And they start talking, we talk about gear. And, but some DJs are very standoffish. They don't want friends. They don't want to be friends with other DJs. But this is the thing with being friends with other DJs. It helps you out. When you have a question, you have a problem, you have something going on, you can rely on other people to go to. Uh, DJ Brantley has a Driftless DJ group in Facebook up there in the Wisconsin and Minnesota area, which I'm part of that group, which... It's always fun reading some of the stuff they put go on go up there with the uh, the cheese heads, and I kind of laugh and giggle. Especially one of the guys goes, "Hey, I'm not in Driftless," and I said, "You know, I'm down here in Illinois, so I'm way out of the little Driftless area." But it's 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 always fun when I see that stuff and I see how people contribute and how people talk to each other, and that's that's one of the things I want to talk about tonight. Um, is let me ask you this. I'm going, to, I'm going to start with Jeff tonight. I'm going to go through everyone. If you ran into another DJ, what is the one word of advice you would give him or her if they're just starting out? So, Jeff, what would be the one word of advice you'd give a fellow DJ just starting out? Good question. I don't know. <laughs> um I have to think about it, but, um, you know, persistence is, uh, is key, you know, especially starting out, uh, you're going to get turned down for a lot. Um, you know, speaking of school, school dances, that's pretty much how I got my start, you know, out of college, you know, I got my name to local schools and, um, you know, that that's a good way to get in, especially if you have kids in those schools, it's uh, that is a, a help. But persistence, you know, um, you're going to get turned down. It's just like uh, just like any job. You know, if you're, you're going for a job interview, you know, you're going to get turned down more than you're going to get accepted. So, yeah, it is what it is. Just you know, persistence, um, practice, and uh, and get good at what you do and have fun doing it. Okay, and that's that's an important thing. You enjoy what you do. I feel that's a very important thing. And, you know, there's a saying, if you if you do something that you enjoy in life, you're never working. It's always like a vacation. And I know that, you know, again, some of us have full-time jobs. Some of us, you know, like I do this full-time, Bradley does it full-time. Um, but the thing is that um, those who do a full-time job, this part-time job, DJing, being a DJ, is sometimes a break and a way they can enjoy themselves and have fun with the job. They may not have enough business to pay all their bills as they would, if, you know, because they're working a regular full-time job, but they enjoy this part of their job if they take it seriously. I know Jeff takes it seriously. I know Dwayne takes it very seriously. I know Matt's a full-time, uh, but everyone here takes their job very seriously. Uh, you know, uh, everyone here does. You know, Terry does. Uh, Tommy does, even though he's in school and stuff like that. Everyone here who comes on the show takes it very seriously. So it's one of those important things that, you know, if if you're enjoying it, that's the biggest thing ever. Because if you enjoy your work, you love your job, you're you're not stressed out about it. Yeah, you may get a little nervous on things, but it's great. And that's some great advice. Enjoy what you're doing. Um, and, and, and you know, even though I, I kind of um, always ask people, what do they think on things? This is something for you guys to think about. Think about how would you out there in the audience would talk to someone at a wedding show. And you're like, I just saw Adrian E at a wedding show. Uh, and he was talking to other DJs on the other side over there. And he's like, Hey, you know what? Uh, you know, give him information, talk to him. They're in his backyard. And, you know, it's, it's like, you know, be a friend, be an ally, be a, a support person for those other vendors, those other DJs, because you may turn around, they may come and help you. And that's one of the first things I would say is to any coming up DJ is that be an ally, be a friend, you know, build friendships, build bridges. 
and don't burn bridges either. If you're not a big fan for someone because they are a uh, uh, less than desirable DJ, just don't don't talk to them. Say, hey, I'm sorry, dude. I I'm busy. I can't do anything. Um, it's one of the things that, yeah, there are DJs you're going to run into, like any business, any person out there that are not that greatest. They're, they may make mistakes, and they're human. And you know sometimes you can help them and say, hey, dude, let me show you how I do this. See if this works better for you. And sometimes you run into people who are just, they are know it all and they think they know everything. And, you know, they like, hey, it's their way and that's it. And you can't get them. So, Terry, down in Texas, the great state of Texas, where stars are bright, big, at, you know, big and bright, deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> and then you're in the deep in the heart of Texas. Uh, what would be your advice to a DJ you ran into, let's say, at a a, a gig or at a a show or even like that car show you just did, you just did a gig of a car show. If another DJ walked up to you and said, Hey, I'm, I'm getting into it. I just started the business. What words of advice would you give them for starting out that you that it would help them out a little bit? Never say no. Never say I can't. And was it third one? And never, um, never discuss politics. Big ones. Oh, and religion. Don't 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 do that. That's that's a very good thing. Don't that's discuss politics. Because, <laughs> but again, when you get your friends, you can know who's on. You know, you may talk to them privately. And again, that's that's one of the things building a friendship. But walking to a person right away saying, "Hey, I vote for so and so," or "I believe that." That's not way how you want to do it because you again you want to make them allies. You mean I agree with them politically? You I agree with them for certain things. But that's the difference of having good friends and having a discussion, not argument. And there's a big difference between a discussion and argument for anything. I mean, I agree with you certain things. That's fine and great. But doesn't mean I still can't be friends with you. I may agree with something that Brettley does or something that Salsas does or something that, you know, Tommy does or, or Dwayne or, or anyone here, Jeff or Terry. But doesn't mean I don't want to be friends with them. Doesn't mean if I went to North Carolina, I would not have dinner, dinner with Jeff and his wife and, and Tracy and I would go dinner with them. I would love to. <clears throat> I hop in my private jet and just fly out there. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I, Come get me if you got a private jet. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't have a private jet. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not wealthy. <laughs> I, I'm middle class. I, I, I'm working like everyone else here, and I'm working DJ like you guys are. So I got to ask Dwayne. Dwayne, thanks for coming in. Uh, I don't know why uh, you didn't get the uh, the blur about it or whatever. I thought it went to you. I apologize to you, sir. But I'm glad to have you here. But again, as yourself, as a teacher, again, Dwayne's main job is teaching. He still got uh, a little bit before he is going to um, say goodbye, sunset that career, and continue on with DJing. But as a either as a teacher, again, that's someone who gives knowledge and 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 expert expertise and some wisdom to a student, and he's used to doing that for students. If you had DJ walk up to you, you know, it was Tommy. Tommy's just started DJing two weeks ago. I'm using sorry, usually Tommy, but the youngest guy here. So <laughs> Tommy walked up to you and said, Hey, Mr. Dixon, I watched you on YouTube. Um, I love to get some information. What would be your words of wisdom to Tommy or another DJ to help them out with their business? Um, first I'll say try to get build up your musical library. And if you're just starting, you probably wouldn't have a whole bunch of music. And that's where I kind of like messed up. I had music all over the place on my hard drive. I would say first, when you download the music, make sure you take the time to properly um, tag your music. Because if you do that, your gigs will, will run smoother. Like tagging it like um, songs you will play for like an opening set when nobody's there or build-ups and um, build your your folders where you have your bangers that you know they will work and all that. Um, also, I tag mines with stars, like half star be something I'll play just to put music on before the, you know, the doors open. Um, five stars, of course, would be your bangers. Three would be your coaster slits. And um, ones would be like when you starting off trying to build up and then just put like any kind of, tags into your one of your fields it could be like slow songs this could be like club it, um anything that's going to trigger your mind because when you start djing 
sometimes your mind just goes all over the place. And it's nice to be able to look and say, okay, this song has X, Y, Z, and then make sure you put everything in this right genre. So if you have your music library together before you get a whole bunch of songs, it's a whole lot easier to, to man maintain as opposed to trying to clean up. And the other thing would be to make sure you network with people. Um, if you network with people, especially someone that's where you're trying to get to, then they can, if they're nice enough, they'll show you the ropes. Because that's how I got into like DJing weddings. Because I was so terrified of doing the weddings and the um, business expect and all that stuff. But um, my coworker took me under, under his wings and let me follow, shadow him a couple of times. And then eventually um, at some of his weddings, he started to let me um, DJ a little bit. And then eventually he just got overbooked and then threw me some gigs and, I, and that took off. So if you do that, and there's one more... Um, networking um music library um make sure you're visible on social media because that's where a lot of the the younger people will see you um then you should be okay okay for the most part to get you going that's some really good information especially with you know social media stuff like that uh, one of the things I always see, and again, you guys can agree or disagree with this. And I'll get your, I'll get your, I ask this a little bit later. But one of the things I see sometimes with DJs on social media is that they, it, it's kind of the same thing. Look, 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 what I did. Look what I could do. Look what I do. Look what I do. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Not look what I could do for you as a client. It's like they're trying to impress other DJs. And again, you can do whatever you want to on social media. But I know some of us here who have YouTube channels, we do it to showcase what we can do to show other clients what, you know, I look like, what I, how, how the setup does, why do I do this? I explain why I'm doing this. You know, Matt, you know, he does this little cheesy little uh, DJ horn. <laughs> I got to tease him about that all the time. He still explains so that way he shows for, uh, his prospect clients that are asking him, hey, do you, can I come to a, a event you're doing? Well, no, you can go to YouTube and see the video. Like Jeff did a uh, school dance. Jeff's done, you know, weddings and stuff like that. He's put a video on YouTube and show his different setups. Why do I'm doing this? Why I'm doing that? Hey, I don't need to do this because it's a smaller group. I don't need to have the big guns out today. I'm going to use a little smaller uh, weapons. And that's the thing is, that, you know, Terry does the same thing. You know, how he did his setup for the, you know, his uh, car show. Uh, Tommy, the same thing. And, and Dwayne, you do the same thing. I, we all feel we do that, but again, some DJs are out there like they want to outgun other DJs, and it's like, yeah, we know you have a skill, we know you have a, a skill set, but instead of showcasing, you know, hey, look at me, I'm a better DJ than you, which is to me, it can be come off as wrong and kind of off putting other DJs, showcase how you do something, say, hey, guys, this is how I do this, and showcase, you know, what I could do for clients. And I think that's a big thing that all of us here do is to make sure that, you know, we're trying to, you know, we want our DJs to see it. I have no problem DJs seeing my videos, but also I like to say, Hey, this is what I could do. This is when a customer asks what, Hey, can you do this wedding? I have, I have a wedding doing this. Oh, here, go look at this video. I just did that. Uh, the last wedding show. I sent people to my YouTube channel. So here, you want to see something? Go look at my YouTube channel and you can watch this video. And they're like, Oh, wow. Okay. And I got some information, you know, emails back and forth with them send links to YouTube. They're like, yeah, I like that. Let's have a meeting. I, we have a meeting tomorrow because of that. So it's one of the things I really feel that, you know, doing your social media uh, right and explain to them a little bit more is a great thing. I and mean, that's a really key, important thing. And speaking of social media, a man who does a lot with social media, I'm going to go to Tommy. Um, his social media on Instagram is on fire right now. If you haven't followed him on Instagram, um, the uh, some of the pictures he has, some of the craziness he has at some of the clubs, uh, has been, uh, let's say, a little bit insane. <laughs> and speaking <laughs> of clubs, I'm going to get to Brentley in a little bit because he's another club DJ here. But don't forget, send Brentley your information. Send him an IM. Ask for stickers. He will send you stickers. Take that picture, put it on Instagram, and hashtag him and mark him for that. So you have those stickers. He has them there. I want to see pictures from you guys out there of those stickers. On Instagram, tagging DJ Brentley in different parts of the country, and uh, make sure that you're tagging him. Tell him, hey, thanks a lot. Give him a thumbs up, and get him one of those stickers. But Tommy, the um, 
the thing, uh, if you had to meet your younger self or another friend, let's say one of your friends came up to say, Hey, Tommy, I, I like DJing. I want to get into it. What would be the first thing you would say? And again, I know you've been DJing for probably what, uh, four years, five years. Yeah. And probably. I think it's like a five at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're, you're, you're 20. You've been doing this since like you're 15, 16. Mm -hmm. And I know you have the talent cause I've worked with you and I've seen you. You're an awesome guy to work with. I'd love to work. I, I, want, I want to work with you again. Uh, but the thing is that if you had to do it and you had to tell someone, hey, this is the first thing I would say to do, what would be the first word of advice you'd give another up-and-coming DJ? First thing I would say is definitely prepare yourself. Uh, by that, I mean uh, having a wide range of music to play so that if you're accepting a gig, you go into it with uh, like a plan in place and you're not just... Uh, playing with a library that's completely unfit for the event. Um, so that's similar to what Dwayne said. But also with uh, being prepared is get the basics down. Um, don't go into a gig trying to do too much. Uh, play what you're comfortable playing and the way that you're comfortable playing. Uh, if you're not super comfortable on the microphone, don't force yourself on the microphone right away. Like use gig experience and experience working with other DJs or seeing other DJs to teach yourself like based off of what you see from them that usually builds up more uh getting more comfortable but then the other thing too would be uh to use social media to network because i mean it was instagram that got me in contact with you in the first place um and same goes for countless other djs that i've connected with via uh instagram or social media it's such a easy way to make connections and all it takes is a simple like on somebody's post or a, a DM and then you've got a full blown conversation going and you never know what it'll turn into. And I will tell you this, talk about social media. One other thing is people uh, sometimes on social media and not, I'm not talking about the DJs. I'm talking about in general act very artificial. They don't act their normal selves. Everyone here I've ever seen on their social media, be it Instagram, be it on YouTube, they're the same in the show as they are on YouTube, as they are in everything. That's why they're here, because they're real people. It's, they don't have this persona, this fake facade of, hey, I'm DJ so-and-so. I act all this way. Then while I'm in here talking on the show or whatever, I act totally different. We're Again, we're real people. And that's one of the things when I talked to Tommy the first time sitting there talking to him, and uh, I asked him to come work with me a few times. It, it's one of the things I knew how he was beforehand, how nice of a person he was and how honest he was, as well as everyone else here. And that's why I've asked people to come on a show here that are people that I'm like, yeah, this person is a real person. They're not a, you know, a uh, paper mache facade of, hey, I'm, I'm a DJ, but actually I'm a really a, a bad person or I'm really this or really that. So everyone here is really, really cool. And I want to get to a couple of things in the chat very quickly before we go on. Uh, hey, Jim, I see you out there. And I see Jeff is also in on Twitch. Uh, Fred, the good son, um, the godson, I see you there. Uh, Hitman, I saw again, I saw you in there earlier. Um, then, uh, let's see here, Mike. No, I am not, as I said before, not a Packers fan. Uh, Adrian E., uh, what's up? Uh, I guess uh, Mike needs to be set on who's Packers, who's Bears, right, Adrian? And who's White Sox? We have three White Sox fans, myself, Tommy, and uh, Adrian E. So we do have one Cubs fan here, which is fine. He's still my friend. <laughs> I still love him. <laughs> I'm still hanging with him and rock with him. I won't, I won't with, hold uh, down to he's a said, Packers fan talk either. About, uh, don't talk about your favorite baseball team at that first client meeting either, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, it's all it's yeah, especially Chicago, it kind of polarizes, you know, between Sox and Cubs. But a lot of times when you talk to people, you can get to know them and say, Hey, but the good thing I do have Tracy who is a Cubs fan. So people are like, I hate the Sox, I love the Cubs. Like, oh Tracy, she's the boss, but they like Sox, and both me, me and the other person can like kind of tease Tracy a little bit, but it's all good humor, it's never, never mean or, or vicious or anything like that. Uh Mikey Mike says, uh, be patient. Practice, practice, and willing to compromise until you have years of experience. That is very crucial. You know, practicing what you're doing, making sure you're doing things right. Um, and then, you know, willing to compromise, saying, hey, you know, I can't do this, but this I could do for you. Or, again, going back to what I first said, partnering with another DJ 
then they have more experience in the area. Like myself asking Jeff, who's done more school dances than I do, you know, afterwards, Grant asked him a few questions, pick his brain a little bit because of the fact that, again, I want to make sure I do things right. Now, can I DJ, do music? Sure. I, I, you know, I, I I have family, I have a daughter, you know, I'm not worried about that. Um, so know how kids are and stuff like that. Again, I, <laughs> I've seen that, but understanding music and some of the things for that to make sure the kids enjoy themselves. And that's where you rely yourself on experts. The other uh, thing is, let's see, Adrian e says, get through the no's and the yeses will come and put yourself out there. This is very true. Uh, you'll hear a lot of no's. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. And you'll start getting yeses. Um, hey. it, uh, he said, uh, Mike, DJ Mikey Mike said, it's like being married. Um, D's touch. Uh, hey, big brother. Hey, what's going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, DJ Fire is working on a new computer tonight. Uh, my his only one went down the other day, and he's building another one right now for a backup. That he'll be watching a show tonight. DJ Fire, Nathan, it's always good to see you here and welcome, brother. Um, as well as Mikey Mike said, come to the pizza capital of the U.S., Old Forge Pizza. I know, um, a certain uh, pizza connoisseur that happens to be Barstool, he went there. And he did go through the pizzas there. Uh, very interesting. But uh, I think Chicago, uh, for pizza wise, uh, I, 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 it. I, it, I think I think our Chicago pizza slice. for the tavern sounds it. good. What was that? You can't beat the Chicago slice. You can't. I'm not you a deep can't. dish person, but you know, tavern style pizza. Uh, I I can do either. But there's something about eating a pizza from Chicago that anywhere else I go, no one can replicate the flavor. It's like Michigan water. Probably. That's why, you know. that's why Portillo's actual ship water out from here when they ship the trucks out for it with the Italian beef to Portillo's restaurants in non-Chicago areas, we'll ship them with water for the hot dogs. Isn't Michigan water like poison? Lake Michigan no, water poison? That's Lake Erie. That's, that's Lake Erie. Chicago River. Is, wait, wait. Wait, am I, am I alive still? Yes, I'm still alive. I drink Lake Michigan water all the time. Not Lake uh, Michigan. Like... Parts of Michigan isn't like that Flint is just... a water system in Flint that has bad pipes, not the that actual water. You guys. <laughs> the water had the water the source they get the water from has a problem which needs to be treated. Not uh uh not sound bad. That's not the uh <laughs> that's not the, like the water is bad, like it's gonna kill you, but it has to be treated differently. Um Mikey Mike says uh we have a few fake DJs in our area. One has all the top toys and can't DJ for his life. Uh, he's an adult Christmas party playing kids' boo Christmas music. Uh, yeah, that, you know, the kids' bop music. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, again, there's there's people like that out there who call themselves a DJ, and it, again, that's what they want to do. People will see it, and hopefully they figure out that they're not a great DJ. Um, and these touch says uh, Cleveland Indians Guardians. We'll go by the Indians. Um, Indians Guardians. They they have been a pain in the rear end sometimes here for Chicago teams. And uh, no, that Mississippi Water, LOL. Uh, no, that's Mississippi Water, LOL. Okay. Yeah. We talk about water from the Mississippi River or down in the state of Mississippi. So <laughs> I know here I mean, in Illinois, you got Chicago, drink. we get Chicago, uh, Lake Michigan water, so we're good. So DJ Bradley, man who gets water from which the river? river? Yeah, we're, we're right in the river. That's right. I live about a mile and a half from the water reclamation plant. And on some days, it's wonderful. Let me tell you. There you go. Well, at least oh, you're yeah. going to grab a five-gallon bucket every time you want water and go down to the river and grab it out, you know? <laughs> you know what's really funny is right next to the water reclamation plant is City Brewery, which is now brewing Old Style and PBR again. Oh. And on certain days of the week or the month, depending on what's going on with them dumping vats and the water plant, you can literally smell the entire, like, four-block area two miles where, uh, away from like where I'm living. It gets that bad. Mm. It's wonderful. PBR. Really, well, a, a lot of Cubs fans like PBR and old style. Uh, yeah. Harry Carey, he, you know, after he did, you know, the Bud fan, you know, 
Cubs the Cubs man Bud fan thing for a while. He went back to old style. He loved his old style. Oh yeah, and, you know that's iconic beer here in Chicago, old style, especially uh, when the old bars. I don't know if your dad had it at his bar, having that sign yep. outside saying "old style" out there hanging aside the marquee. Those marquees are always. I, I see those. I'm like, that's that's an old bar, and that's a cool place to hang out. That's that's a dive bar. That's a place you want to hang out. So DJ oh, yeah. Brantley, since uh, you've uh, decided uh, <laughs> to talk about beer, <laughs> besides not drinking at a gig, um, what uh, what uh, what words of advice you'd give someone? First off, and I'm glad I had when I got into the DJ world was I had a mentor and I kind of already knew what I wanted to do as a DJ which was back in that era, spinning industrial and goth music at Medusa's in Chicago. But first thing Medusa's. Oh yeah. That was, that was fun. I mean, what 16 to 18 year old wouldn't like being the video jockey in the biggest all ages dance club in the city of Chicago. Uh, There was, I, I can't, there's been very few DJ career highs that have ever really come close to what it was like at that age. But the one thing I would say, what kind of DJ do you want to be? And once you figure that out, practice, 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 but find yourself the network, you know, a mentor or somebody that can kind of guide you or you can tap into their brain when you need. That's something that when I started, I had, you know, the guy who really brought me into it and the couple of cats I worked with at the record shop. So that was all like musically, I really got a good understanding of it all. But that leads me to the next part of it. Once you know what kind of DJ you really want to be, you need to learn your music inside and out from, and not, and you can do so by a making your crates, figuring out what songs and your crates don't have to be anything more than things that you crates names that you understand. Like, for example, the one I use for like Animal House and Lacrosse Beer House, I just call it college because it's the college party jam crate. For when I'm DJing at like Icon Stadium View and Legends here, I call it slightly misogynistic. I call it my main B. And the other it's accompanying is my little B is the opener. So I have those two, which are strictly dance EDM housey kind of things. But then, you know, breaking my entire library down. So I have all of my years charted out for, you know, top 40 and, you know, pop radio or dance. So making sure you know your music inside and out and sort it in the way that you understand it, be it putting stars on it. So, you know, or color coding it, you can on record box and knowing how the song starts, stops it, where you can mix out of the song if it's bombing how to quick mix out of it if you need to, all that, knowing every little bit of every song you're going to play. So you can pretty much just go into your controller and get to it. And then the last thing, and in my personal opinion, don't DJ for other DJs. Rachel says this a lot, and I have always been a big believer in this. Honestly, don't, unless they're paying your bills, that other DJ, don't DJ for them. If they have constructive criticism, by all means, take it because every opportunity can be something you can learn from. Be it the girl running up to the booth with her phone like this to you, asking for a song that might turn into the next banger that you're like, why haven't I been playing this? Wow. Like you guys were talking about Beyonce last week. I had three phones in one night and I'm like, okay, I'm doing it. And wow, I wish I kind of started playing it a week before that because everybody is going off on it. I was, one on I was floored. But again, it takes somebody, if you're going to be a DJ, to step away and ditch your ego. Your ego, while you're working, you know, be it at a club gig, be it at couples, your ego doesn't have a place there. Confidence in your ability to execute your job, by all means, you need to have that. You need to have the pair to go out there, get on the mic, be the MC, be the DJ, and work hard for every gig. But put your ego aside. It's only going to do you injustice and miss and misserve you later on down the road 
when it comes to networking and being a part of the DJ community so you can learn more. Yep, and that's that's the important thing is that there is difference between being cocky and being confident. There's a fine line. Sometimes you can be a little bit over on each side, but you want to be confident, not cocky. And you want to be open to, hey, you know what, uh, DJ Bradley, I saw your light show. And, you know, the PARs, uh, I'm not a fan for them. You you stink as a DJ because you use PARs. No, that's the wrong way of doing it. Yeah. Hey, DJ Bradley, why are you, why are you using PARs? I, I don't understand it. Explain to me how you're doing. Oh, I like to shade the, the crowd better. I like the wash of it. But he can explain why he's doing it. And maybe you think, maybe I'm doing something wrong versus, oh, you're doing something wrong. No, it's not. Exactly. You're doing something wrong. It's a different way of looking at things. And there, again, and there's no right or wrong answer to it all. No, it's no. What you're, we, I mean, I mean, I like, for example, solstice setups, your couples dictate what they want from you. And other DJs who are going to comment on any gig log or give you a hard time about it. It's like, hey, uh, you didn't pay the bill for this gig log. This is what this couple asked of me. So more often than not, and for example, my big light show that I finally put back together, which, yeah, I'm buying Titan tubes. It's done. It's happening in a couple of weeks. <laughs> it's it's not, it, it, it's beyond what, it, it's it's time. But putting that together was just another offering I could have for my couples. And if they want that, it gives me more, you know, capability to give a couple what they want. And I was kind of having fun with it. Didn't think it would turn out that great, but when I put it all together and I started looking at like the gig bar uh, to move to what I've got, it's got more power to it. I mean, more, you know, more wash, more show. And it's all stuff I had laying around my garage. I hadn't used really. So taking it out and using it was like, if I'm not going to use it, I'm going to sell it. And I still might sell some of it, but it's good for now. Yeah. And that, that's, the, my thing, that's the thing is that understanding things and asking, asking questions is one thing. But just saying, hey, you stink as a DJ, you know, Jeff stinks he's a DJ because he does this or because he, you know, or you stink because of that. It's a different way of doing things. You know, I don't go up to Matt and say, hey, Matt, you use too many lasers or, you know, I may tease him and stuff like that and joke around with him, but he's a friend. And the thing is that he does what he feels best. And Matt, I know you are very opinionated in a lot of things. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. why I love you uh, as a bro. And the thing is that... Um, if you were telling talking to another DJ who's starting out, what would be the first thing you tell them besides getting dual 21s? <laughs> uh, choose a different career. <laughs> <laughs> it's too impacted. There's too many people. <laughs> um, I I mean, I would just say good. Like people, some people have asked me that. And like, if someone in this area were to like say, Oh, I'm going to get into DJing. I would just say good luck. Like, it's it's bad enough as it is there's so many of us that like it's so hard to get started but i would like realistically if you want a positive answer um don't give up i mean you're gonna get like someone else said a bunch of no's before you get a yes um and you also like when i started i i started in college and uh, i was just doing house parties and um you know you do them for 50 bucks an hour or whatever it takes to to get your foot in the door and start building your skill set. So I would say that um, invest in quality equipment, because if even if like now there's so many companies that offer payment plans that are like no credit check, just Zounds pays you go. And I mean, you've got to show up with good equipment because if you have some crappy speakers, it's just going to make you look bad from the start. So uh, and there is a I Facebook group more. for that for bad setups and not sound bad but he still got the gig he yeah, still right. got the gig <laughs> but the, the, yeah there's always that guy who says that in there but the thing but, is that how bad was the lighting show how we oh, there we go got to focus how bad is the lighting show how bad was the sound and that's one of the things is that uh, like Matt is saying don't give up and that's the most key important thing and but then the, also I wouldn't um like uh, know your market i think um like know that you're a beginner dj and know that like you know people are going to be hesitant to hire you and and you shouldn't be just throwing out fifteen hundred dollars just because oh that's that's what i think like a wedding dj should cost like no just 
either start low or even try and like join a company and, and get hired on or, or practice. Like when I started DJing, I practiced for three months uh, before I had my first gig. And I literally had notes, like the notes app on my MacBook with like where I should transition. I didn't know how to just like freely open format mix. I was just like, if someone comes to request something and I don't like have it analyzed and like in my playlist for the night, like I would be clueless. So, but of course it just comes with practice and, and experience. And now it's like, you know, I can mix pretty much anything. And now that I have a fancy controller like you guys do with an echo out, you guys can really make it easy. Try, <laughs> try, try DJing your whole career without having an echo out. And uh, let me know how it goes. It's not easy. You gotta, you gotta. I, I, be... You know what? I that's not bad. I've never used an echo out. I guess because I started well, you on turntables. Mix, different. You don't you know, quick well, mix. Well, again, I started dinosaurs too. So you know the I, dinosaurs I, I, and the turntables. I've got, I have to do. I use three different echo outs. Uh, wait, no, I use four different echoes on my pads because two are ones that you know you if you hit it, it's you know you have to release it or it just stops everything. Or be an echo on the track itself to, in a certain spot where I can use stems and only uh, on record box. I don't know if you do it on Serato or Virtual, but you can isolate. Yeah, you can the effect and only make the effect go on the vocal track while the mm -hmm. rest of it's still playing. It's got there's there's a cool one that's in Virtual DJ. It's it's either stem. It's one of the plugins, but it has a beat slicer instru an instrumental beat slicer stem pad. So it'll just pull. Like a, if you want like a quick redrum type thing on the fly, it can just do that. And I've set it up to be a hold. So uh, the possibilities are endless. I mean, DJing comes down to timing at the, you know, the most important thing is knowing music and timing and, and keeping a beat. The If you can do that, the rest is, you know, just, I, I'll, I'll be frank with you. I didn't know what mixing in key was. I've never looked at the key of any song. I've never matched a key. I've never changed the pitch. Like I changed the speed. Sure. But I don't, I don't ever look at what key i'm mixing i just kind of like oh this sounds terrible together and i'll choose a different song so i don't i i don't know what the key field even really is used I, for i really got into playing with keys when uh even steve at club killers uh steve Dan, mm -hmm. him and i i sent him some of my stuff he's like that's good but i can tell what you're it was like a slight key like a half step off or something and it, it was ne wasn't noticeable to anybody except for somebody who would be picking that up picking it apart right so and that's and that, yeah that's a hard part and when i'm doing if, if i'm doing mashups live then yeah i'm definitely trying to keep the keys in some kind of check so it doesn't come out saying like a minor over a seventh or something stupid like that right and that's that's always that, that takes time, takes practice, and understanding of music. And Brentley is a musician. He's played, he has, he has tons of different instruments, including thrash and guitar. Uh, you were a metal band, right? I, I played punk. I played metal, and then ended the last ten years of me playing live. I was in a bluegrass band playing upright bass. And there you go. So you got guys who play Metallica, no problem. One other piece of advice: uh, don't get a Pioneer controller. <laughs> it's too complicated. <laughs> uh, see, I uh, see. I, I love my Pioneer or controller. I know Brentley had a problem. Man, yeah, you'll have problems like Brentley. But I like my Pioneer, and I like my line arrays. It's speak. It's crazy. It's crazy to to me that like you say, oh, pay for brand name gear. It'll be great and it's reliable. Like buy Chevet, buy American DJ. They don't buy from China. And then you have the number one DJ company, Pioneer, and they're making stuff that's breaking left and right. And it's like, how can you? Like a company like Hercules is making more reliable products than somebody like Pioneer. It just doesn't make sense. Like really? you're paying for the really premium. Does. You're paying for a premium, but it's not a premium product. It's it, I don't know if they're I, I, again. I don't. I I haven't run really many problems with Pioneer, and little problems I run into here and there is you know like you know stuff wearing out and just you know get it repaired or replaced. But I know Brentley's had some problems with a crossfader on one, and he's got some problems still with his one unit, and yeah. hopefully it gets rectified one way or another. Um, and that's the thing is that, you know, again, anything you spend money for, be it a, a dance light, be it whatever, uh, it, it's, it's not, it, it's sometimes it's, it's, you go buy the best of the best and still have a problem with it. You can go buy a Rolls Royce and still run into something wrong with the, something with the vehicle. It's, it's all, I'm the problems. My, my yeah, uncle it, had a Mercedes. It was always yeah, in the shop. It, yeah. It all boils down to how, you know, also how they take care of it too. And that's a big thing, but we got a couple of things in the common area here. Um, first thing first, uh, D says, uh, and you can't be successful if you don't take requests. 
And then going back to the key parts, uh, that's where music therapy can help. And then um, Mikey Mike said, uh, man, that's a, that's a truth. Never DJ for another DJ, especially he or she is your friend. That is very, very true. Very true. But uh, Mike, uh, Mike also asked uh, if you're starting out what kind of equipment to purchase. And that's a whole nother show right there. But here's one thing to ask you guys. And we've talked a little bit about this from time to time is uh, we talk about music. We all like our certain computers. Some are Apple, some are PC and we different ways of doing things. Uh, how many guys here run an external hard drive? run an extra hard drive on there with their music or music videos. I pay for that terabyte storage. I, okay. I and the thing is that the reason I ask is because the fact that a lot of DJs get a smaller hard drive on their computer and they store on an external hard drive. And I know Apple has only a couple USB drives on their computers. Uh, some of the newer PCs have less so you got to run a uh, USB hub. But here, here's one of the things I'm going to go on and ask. And this is for everyone, uh, for someone starting out. I'm going to start with Jeff with this one. Is First thing first, if someone said, hey, I want to get an external hard drive, do you tell them to get a standard hard drive or an SSD, a solid state drive, either in the computer or separate? So if I'm going to either buy a new computer or I'm going to – have an external hard drive, do you do an SSD or you do a standard hard external hard drive or internal hard drive? Jeff, what do you prefer for yourself for hard drive? Yeah, SSDs all the way. I mean, you know, less chance of a failure. Um, you know, I have an external hard drive that is a, uh, it's a disk drive. It's a four terabyte that I uh, back up all my music on. Uh, do not take that with me. That's just a, uh, uh, another one of my three different backups that I have for all my music. Um, but yeah, internal on your computer, doesn't matter if it's a PC or Apple. I, I would always suggest an SSD, just not, not going to get, uh, you know, if you drop it or whatever, you're not going to get any, you know, any damage or very, very less likely to get damage. Um, it's a few bucks more, but again, it's worth it. That's my opinion. Okay. And um, we're going to go with Terry. Terry, hard drive, SSD, standard hard drive. What is your uh, your choice? Um, recommendations are your mobile. You don't want to carry a compact disc anywhere because it can scratch. So if you're dropping it all the time, it's going to scratch. Later on down the road, you know. Because the, the way the needles go in the in the um, the regular drive, and then you got the SSD drive is basically you got a bunch of uh, bunch of little different pieces in there. So it is. It I recommend SSD because um, you could drop it a million times, and it might be a million and one before you break it. But if you drop the other hard drive, you pretty much can screw it up. Well, I, I think also depends too, because a lot of the portable external hard drives like this, they do have some shock absorption in there. Again, I would not say, hey, go drop it off your roof of your house. That would be horrible. And I saw Mikey Mike said uh, Samsung T7. That's a South State drive. South State drives will take a little more abuse than a standard uh, drive. But, you know, the other thing is that I know some guys and there's companies now that you can get actually a thumb drive or, you know, one of these. And this is from Micro Center. I, I love these little cheap ones from Micro Center. This is 16 gigs. Uh, you can find them on Amazon, uh, a pack of them. Works to be like, like six bucks each. But if you have a Micro Center in your area, you can go there. They have this whole entire display in front. They start 16 gigs. I remember these were like one gig not too long ago for like three, four bucks, five bucks for these. And you can get a, some of these and have a few of these with music on here. Uh, and they go up to, uh, last time I was at 
micro center uh, last summer. They had 256 gig thumb drives. And I was like, I want to say it was like 30 bucks, 40 bucks for 256 thumb drive, if I remember correctly. Uh, you can go, again, you go on Amazon to take a look and see what's there. But the thing is that, you know, it's one of the things that if you're looking for hard drive space, that's another thing you can do is some thumb drives. So just make sure you kind of label and have stuff going on. DJ but Bradley. I, I wanna, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Terry. I wanted to say, if you're going to get a thumb drive, don't make it over 128 gigs. Because after that, they're trash. I, I I do want to recommend that. So you run the problems with uh yeah, yeah. There are a lot of problems with the 256 and over. They 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 and especially if you buy them from Amazon, they brand them all crazy. So I it's not recommended. So I have here. I have a two fifty six from micro center thumb drive okay. and i've had no problems with this one and i have 64 gigs thumb drives and the reason i have these two here they're next to me they're backups on my computer and they're on top of my my computer i have a big oh, sure. huge uh <laughs> a big huge uh pc here um big huge tower but these right here are backups of the hard drive the basic stuff the you know the main drive and stuff like that uh to back up and do your backups every so often but um, uh, I've not run any problems with either or, but again, if you run into problems with it, um, you know, with the 256 and above, um, yeah, I, I can see you being gun shy with anything, you know, if it's not working for you, it's not working for you. And that's, that's a good thing to always see. Hey, if it's not working for you, think of something else to do. Uh, DJ Bradley, what about you? Do you do, uh, SSD or standard? For the longest time I use standards and, when I got my i9 MacBook Pro, it had a 1T SSD. And when I got the one I'm using now, it has a 2T SSD. And after using these two, and uh, I set them up the right way with Rekordbox and got rid of my external hard drives, I cannot tell you how much better they work, hands down, without having an external. And to anybody who's looking to do it, upgrade your computer before you start using an external. Honest to God, that's my personal opinion on it. But, and obviously the i9 is a great, you know, processor from four years ago. And it still works amazingly well. But when I took off the external and put all my music on the hard drive itself, it, it, it seemed to work night and day. And again, the other thing I will do is I've got a ton of them, thumb drives. But when I have DJ at Icon and Stevens Point, uh, Night School in Wassa or Legends here in Lacrosse, because they've got CDJs there, I'm bringing one of these in case my computer has any glitches, or two of them actually, one per CDJ. So if one goes down, I can just keep going, and it's not ideal, but you can do the reassignment and keep mixing back and forth, which I've had to do a couple of times at gigs, which is so annoying. But yeah, I'm all about not keep using externals. I have it uh, for gigs. Otherwise, I have two uh, one uh, two terabyte SSDs that have all my playlists on them. So if something goes wrong with my computer, I can plug in one of those hard drives, and all my playlists are there and ready to go. And when it comes to my full library, I've got two four T drives that have all of my music duplicated on each one. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things that you know having that backup, having that again, these are cheap. You go on Amazon, uh, sixteen gigs. Again, you get a pack of like eight of them for like next to nothing, and it makes them like you know three, four, five bucks each. Very easy and have that backup for music just in case. Matt, what about you? Are you hard drive? Uh, are you hard drive? Hard drive? Send your hard drive? Or are you SSD? Uh, um. So, I'm all. I mean. I, I guess we've all been forced into SSDs. Um, I have a MacBook 2011 that has a one terabyte um, hard drive and thing is amazing. Still works great. So, um, and mind you, there's been a CD that's stuck in the CD drive for about 60 years now. So uh, if that's any indication that it's a good computer and the old hard drive still work great, then whatever. Um I don't know though. I don't 
I don't even know what these are actually. I don't know. Uh, I have a old I have an old computer that uh a um Asus gaming computer. I don't have a CD stuck in its CD drive, I, and that's buy, probably I 11 years old. <laughs> I, I buy whatever's cheapest because, like, I, the only thing I use an external hard drive for is um, uh, Time Machine backups, which is like a full Mac backup. And um, I guess the, all my music's backed up in there anyway. But I have a, if I'm just transferring stuff back and forth or if I need like files on the go, I have like a, I think it's a 256. Um, one of these little things and it's like as small as your you know it's a little sand disc 256 thing is lightning fast usb it's not USB C, but um works great so i don't know to me i mean sure solid state is great but uh i think uh, somebody told me once that like hard drive with movable parts are a lot easier to extract in case your data gets like your computer fries so uh i don't know though Solid states also aren't they supposed to have like a limited lifespan, whereas like actual hard drives can, in theory, keep spinning forever. Technically, yeah. Uh, any anything mechanical, everything right. mechanical. So your hard drive one day may die. Doesn't matter what kind of hard drive it is, because it's electronic and it's made by humans. So unless all of a sudden tomorrow um, aliens come down and give us a different way of storing uh, uh, data. Um, I would definitely would say any hard drive you have, make sure you're mirroring it and backing it up. Again, Jeff does a backup. <laughs> Terry does a backup. Bradley does a backup. Matt does a backup. And I'm going to go now to Dwayne. Dwayne, are you regular standard spinning disc or are you an SSD hard drive person? SSD. I heard that SSD is supposed to have a faster read and write speed. They do. But... But actually, I try to get a, a computer with the with enough hard drive internally, because that's even faster, and do that. But I back up my stuff on the external hard drive. So, you know, the thing is that um, with PC, uh, the eSATA ports on a hard drive. Again, I this is a custom built computer next to me. I'm gonna have another custom built computer this year for you know dropping whatever I need to drop to get a computer that works well. But the eSATA ports will be faster than a USB 3.1. Now, the USB-C ports, which a lot of computers are getting, and I use a USB-C uh, hard drive on my computers I take out to the field. And on those USB-C, they're much quicker than USB 3.1. So USB-A ports, the 3.1s put a lot of data very quickly. I've never really run into much problem with them. Uh, transferring data from one source to another source, not that bad. Um, but the C's are actually are quicker. And I could tell you that because again, I update my hard drive, and that's one of the things I'm gonna have to do is update my hard drive for a uh, gig coming up, make sure I have uh Texas Hold'em. So I'm gonna have make sure I have Beyonce's song <laughs> uh, <laughs> and make sure I have those other cool things too. But it is a USB-C is faster than a USB-A. The other thing um, also is that, uh, you know, again, uh, SSDs will survive that that impact a little better. Uh, DJ, oh, uh, New Picard, uh, you're here. He, he's happy you caught this live. Stuff happens to everything. Uh, SSDs for me, convert all my laptops to that. Okay. And then uh, DJ Fire, SSD all the way. I just installed a four terabyte SSD into one he's building, and my other one is a one terabyte. And uh, there are Samsungs. Uh, and uh, Noob uh, Picard says, "Disc are old school." And again, external. I have. I just got this one. This is um, what is it? Western Digital on Amazon. Four terabytes, hundred bucks. You know, it, again, it's, it's cost. I'm I'm getting something that's very basic, very uh for price wise. Now I do have Samsung T8 um drive, which is faster on SSD than a T7. And you gotta look at your speeds and stuff like that. And can your computer support that speed? I'm gonna go down to Tommy. Tommy, since you are a uh yeah. since you're a young man in college and you're not just dealing with music, but you're also dealing with college stuff. Uh, what do you prefer on your computer? You could prefer a 
regular standard disk, or do you prefer uh, you or you prefer a SSD drive? Uh, I use a Samsung T7, so the SSD. Um, I did originally have one of the Western Digital uh, HDD drives, but uh, it I I don't know if it was a problem with the cable. It, it it had to have been the cable because I was able to transfer everything from that drive to my newer Samsung drive, but I did run into some problems with it, and at that point. I was willing to just spend more money for the uh, for the SSD drive. So that's been reliable for me so far. And that's the thing is that uh, reliability is a huge thing, especially for us. Uh, we want to make sure we have reliable equipment. So, uh, Mike, going back to you, if you had talked to a DJ who is looking at equipment, that would be one thing to check off the list, make sure whatever they get – has a drive that they can work, either if it's external or internal. Uh, make sure that it's a drive that per, uh, predominantly would be SSD. Um, however, the new computer I'm building, uh, I'm looking at a spinning disk for the main storage of 14 terabytes of Rugger spinning disk because they don't make a SSD that big that's not less than like $1,000. <laughs> But I do want to have that because in here, the computer next to me right now, I do have a 8 terabyte uh, standard drive. I have a 4 terabyte standard drive. And then I have two 1 terabyte SSD drives. Uh, and my main drive, my C drive on my computer here is an SSD and it has all my software on there. So Windows, uh, Virtual DJ, and so forth is on that. Uh, my laptops are all SSDs except for... I do have an external drive, which I use. It's a standard hard drive, but it's a Western Digital. It's a heavy-duty Western Digital. It takes a lot of abuse. Uh, is, is bulletproof? No, like anything else, it can have a problem if you if you run into it. All boils down to how you take care of your stuff. But the thing is that the nice thing the SSD drive, it is easier to update because I could take it out, not worry about turning my computer on, take the hard drive over here, plug it in, and update. So that is the big thing. And, you know... It's, it's it's always a hard thing, and you, as an owner of a business, have to decide what's best for you, where to spend your money, and that's always the hard part. I want to thank you all for having a wonderful night this evening. I see uh, DJ Fire says his new computer is also going to be liquid-cooled, which I have liquid-cooled. That is cool. I love a liquid-cooled system. Putting a sweet computer together, I'll have it, a video on it. It should be done tomorrow sometime, so... And we on a new graphics card, which should be there, should be by him tomorrow. Uh, make sure that you follow him, DJ Fire, on all the social media. He has like 15 channels on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. And make sure you follow everyone here. Don't forget, smash the like button if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching us here on Twitch, it's your first time here. Make sure you follow us. I'm always going here on a show on Tuesday nights. And then I pop up during the week playing music. So if you're just here watching the show, don't forget, I do music too. I'll be up here and playing. Last time I played music, it was two hours of Rod Stewart. Sounds like really crazy, but think of it going to a concert. If you go to a concert to see someone, whatever your favorite band is, usually there for an hour, hour and a half. This was all Rod Stewart songs, all from the 70s, all the way up to uh, more current stuff. And it was actually a lot of fun stuff, a lot of stuff you've heard, and a lot of people were enjoying themselves. So make sure that you follow here. Other than that, I'm going to ask for Tommy. Tommy, tonight, you're going to take us away. Tommy, take us away tonight. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining tonight. Uh, good luck to everyone on your gigs this weekend or whatever you have going on. Have a safe and good weekend, and we'll see you next week. All right, guys. See you later. Thank you for all tuning in. Bye-bye.